This is a great recipe to make salads more enticing and even to encourage picky eaters and kids to eat first and second helpings. The secret here is putting fresh fruit into the salad, having some toasted nuts, and then a sweet salad dressing so that it's more interesting than just a plain lettuce, cucumber, and tomato salad. The first ingredient you need to have is eight cups, eight heaping cups of baby greens. You can buy a pre-washed baby greens mix, or if you like, you can use red leaf, romaine, green leaf, or some combination of a couple of different salad greens. You'll also need to have one half to one cup of toasted pecans. You'll need one and a half to two cups of thinly sliced celery, or you'll need some cucumber, and three pears, roughly three fresh ripe pears. And you'll need one half to three quarters of a cup of poppy seed pineapple drizzle or poppy seed orange drizzle. Now, the first step is to toast the nuts. I'm starting here with raw shelled pecans. You could use almonds, walnuts, or pecans. Make sure that you have a large baking sheet. Make sure to preheat the oven to 325. And you want to make sure to preheat the oven before you put the nuts in there because otherwise they'll burn easily. The other thing you want to do is if the nuts have been in the freezer or the refrigerator, let them come to room temperature before you put them in the oven so they toast evenly. I have some nuts that have already been toasting, so I'll pull them out now. While they're toasting, you want to make sure to stir them from the outside to the inside because the ones on the outside of the tray are going to brown more quickly. You know they're done when they're slightly golden and they have a nutty, fragrant smell. And if you're not sure, you can break one open and see if it's the same color inside and out, or you can blow on it a little bit and taste it. What you're looking for, again, is that nutty fragrance and a little bit of golden color, but you don't want them to burn. Set a timer. It usually takes about 12 to 15 minutes for almonds, walnuts, or pecans. If you have something really small, like pistachios or pine nuts, it could be as little as five or six minutes. So again, stay close and set a timer. I always toast more nuts than I need for a single recipe, and then I put the leftovers in a jar in the refrigerator. You could sprinkle them over oatmeal, a fruit salad, uh, sprinkle them over a green salad. They can go on all kinds of snacks, side dishes, and entrees for a really delicious garnish. All right, for the celery, if you're using celery and it's the outer stalks of the celery leaves, it's a good idea to peel them. You might not have ever been shown how to do that, but peeling celery can make a big difference. What you do when you peel the celery is you get that stringy stuff off, the stuff that easily gets stuck in your teeth. So if you were cooking for people who have bridges, braces, or temporary fillings, or um, they're waiting to get a new crown, you don't want to have people get the celery stuck in their teeth. So peeling off those strings will mean that they don't get stuck in your teeth. Now from here, if you're going to chop the celery, all you need to do is do really thin slices either on the diagonal or straight across. And it's really important to make the slices really thin. And if you want them smaller, you can cut them in half like this or before you slice. The celery will add a really nice crunch and a little bit of a slightly bitter flavor to complement the other ingredients. Now, if you want to use a cucumber, there are a couple of steps that you need to do. So you have your choice of celery or cucumber here. If you're going to use cucumber and you have one of these long English cucumbers, you'll probably only need half of it. Next you want to peel it. Peeling the cucumber is really important to make it more digestible. You're just peeling off the inedible part. And people who find cucumbers hard to digest and find that they cause burping are usually amazed that they can eat cucumbers without any side effects if they've peeled them. Once you've peeled the cucumber, the next step is to seed it. This is also really important for digestion. To seed a cucumber, all you have to do is cut it in half and then take a small spoon, a regular teaspoon, or a melon baller and run it down the center and scoop out the seed part. You'll be amazed at what a difference this makes. You're also getting rid of some of the strong bitter flavor that can be in the skin and in the seeds. Now you'll just cut it into thin slices straight across or on the diagonal. 
You need to make sure your knife is really sharp. And that's all there is to it. Now, once you've decided on cucumber or celery and you've chopped them, the next step is to work on the pears. Now, for this recipe, you need to make sure that the pears are ripe, but still a little bit firm. They should yield to pressure, but they should also smell fragrant. When you're shopping for pears, if they're rock hard, buy them at least a few days ahead and let them sit out at room temperature until they smell fruity and yield to pressure. If you buy the pears and they're already ready to eat and they're already smelling ripe and fruity, put them in the refrigerator so that they don't become overripe. Now, in this recipe, you can use two to three fresh pears, depending on your preference, or if you don't have pears, feel free to substitute three cups of fresh blueberries that have been rinsed and patted dry. Now, for the pears, you also need to peel them. They'll look prettier, and again, you'll get rid of the bitter skins. Once you've peeled the pears, the next step will be to have them and scoop out the seed portion. Cut it in half like this, and then again, take a regular teaspoon like this, a teaspoon like this, or a melon baller, and scoop out that seed center like this. Once you've scooped that out, you want to scoop off that blossom end where there's a little bit of a nub right there. like so, and then your pears are ready to cut in half. If you have any discolored parts on the pear, make sure to cut those away as well. And if you want smaller pieces, you can cut the pear in half like this, so now you have quarters, and then thinly slice. Another thing that's important to do, if you don't plan to serve the entire salad today, make sure that you coat the pear slices with a little bit of lemon juice, lime juice, or orange juice before you add them to the salad so that the leftovers will still be good the next day and they won't brown. Now we'll add the celery. And the toasted pecans. You can leave the pecans whole, or if you like, you can coarsely crumble them before adding them to the salad. And if you want a slightly sweeter taste, feel free to add a quarter to a half a cup of dried cranberries or dried fruit sweetened cherries for a little extra sweet taste. Now, we're ready to serve the salad. If you plan to dress and serve the entire salad at once, you can pour the dressing over the entire salad, mix it, and then serve. But if you don't think you're going to serve it all at once, you can just scoop out what you want for a single serving. Getting a little bit of each ingredient. Now, if you're doing a single serving and you want to dress it up a little bit, you can also arrange the ingredients artfully on your plate. Besides serving this as a side salad, you could also make it into a main course salad by having a large serving of salad and then fanning some sliced chicken over the top or turkey breast or duck, and then you can add your dressing. For the poppy seed pineapple drizzle we're using today, you want to make sure to stir it before you add it. And you can generously add this dressing to your salads because it actually contains a fraction of the fat of most salad dressings. And it adds a lot of flavor and a lot of freshness to your salad. And now it's ready to serve.